It's Pastor Burns. Welcome to our live stream today. Hope that you're doing well, that your family is well. Normally we're in the big auditorium, but today I wanted just to, uh, to change things up. Uh, you know, they say that variety is the spice of life. I wanted just to change things up and um, I wanted to give you more of a one-on-one -on -one personal Bible study here today. So glad that you're joining us on this live stream. Uh, take some time and write your name in the comments. If you have any prayer requests, you can also add those prayer requests in the comments as well. This is pre-recorded, so I won't pray for them tonight, um, but we're going to pray for them as a group, and we're going to pray for them throughout the week. And so we want to hear from you. Add those prayer requests. Uh, say hi to those who are in this live stream. I'm glad that you're joining us today. Just a couple of announcements before we begin our message today. Uh, let's go over our victory verse for the month of October. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12 is our victory verse. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. This verse actually is a verse of security, a verse uh, of um, you know confidence in God, trusting the Lord for our life. Here's what the Bible says. For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom, that's a person, whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Let's go over this verse together. Say with me if you could for the uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. Here we go. For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. We're grateful for God's care and love in our life, and we know that God is able and God can keep that which we've committed unto Him against that day. So prayer requests that have been brought uh, across my desk this week. Uh, let's pray if we could for Stephen, uh, for spiritual needs, and for Marie, for help and safety in her life. Let's pray for Brett, for spiritual growth, for Zenny. Um, Zenny is the mother of uh, some bus kids that came on our bus uh, years ago, and uh, she's struggling with cancer. She's going through surgery in just a few weeks from now, and so um, we're going to pray for Zenny for health and pray for God's help in her life and pray for her family as well during this time. Uh, as well, if we, could pray, if we could pray for each other, for our church family, and pray for the needs that we all have each and every day. Remember, if we could, to pray for the financials of the church. It's on certain days, and uh, we need to pray for each other and pray for our church and pray that uh, God's blessing will be seen uh, as we obey Him each and every day. Let's take a moment, if we could, tonight, and let's bring these requests to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful for all that You've done for us, and Lord, we're thankful for Your wonderful blessings that You give to us each and every day. Lord, we know that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from You, that you are a giving God, a loving God, a tender God. And Lord, we can rest our life in your hands. I pray, Lord, at this time for Stephen. I pray, Lord, for the needs that he has. I pray for Marie, for your help and, and uh, your safety in her life. I pray for Brett and for his spiritual growth. Thank you, Lord, for your work in his life to bring him to a place of salvation. I pray for Zenny at this time. And Lord, I pray that your blessing would be upon uh, the surgeries in which she is going to have. And I pray you would give the doctors wisdom and guide, guide the surgeon. Lord, I pray you would, you would just intervene and, and you, would be a, you would be a part of everything that's happening there. I pray for Zenny's family at this time. Give them comfort, Lord. Uh, help them, Lord, to, to take steps forward in their faith for you. Lord, I pray for each other. I pray for every uh, individual, uh, every person, a part of our church, Lord, and the needs that they may have. And I pray, Lord, that you would meet them. I pray you would give them a special blessing. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, keep a watch over each of us. I pray for the financials of our church, that, uh, Lord, that you would continue to bless. We thank you for your provision. Uh, may you be glorified with the life that we live. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're grateful for the opportunity, church family, that we can pray and we can talk to the Lord and give our requests to Him during uh, these days. Uh, remember, our in-person services, you can sign up 
at kitchenerbaptist.org or the Facebook, our fo- Facebook page as well. There's a sign-up sheet there. And you can sign up for either the 9 o'clock service or the 1030 service. You can sign up. You can do that uh, right after the service here tonight. 9 o'clock in the morning or 1030. We're looking forward to those in-person services and be in prayer for those services if we could. Uh, that um, for God's protection and God's help as the Holy Spirit is working in our life. And then also be in prayer for our two live streams. Sunday night at 6 p.m., Brother Mars preaching a fantastic message on real Christianity, what it means to be a Christian. Our, our society today has taken that word and they have mangled it to death. I mean, it doesn't mean what the Bible teaches it, it teaches us it means. And so Brother Mar is going to look at that. He's going to teach us from Scripture what it means to be a Christian. And so I hope you'll join us for Sunday night at 6 o'clock. And then Wednesday, uh, again, we'll be back in the auditorium next Sunday, uh, excuse me, next Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And so I hope you'll join us for our live stream Sunday night at 6 p.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. for those live streams. Let me just give you a couple of jokes. I want to just uh, share with you tonight. Maybe it'll make you smile or make you laugh. These are pretty cheesy jokes. Uh, these are extremely, what well, I guess what the world would call dad jokes, right? These are dad jokes central, okay? I hope that these will make you smile. Uh, someone said this, I went to a store to buy some books about turtles. Hardbacks? Asked the shopkeeper. Yes, I replied. And they have little heads too. <laughs> What does the world's top dentist get? A little plaque. (laughs) Uh, Have you heard about Murphy's Law? Yes, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. How about Cole's Law? No. Well, it's cabbage in a creamy dressing. (laughs) These are terrible. What did the green grape say to the purple grape? What did the green grape say to the purple grape? He said, breathe, man, breathe. (laughs) A man walks into a library and orders a hamburger. The librarian says, this is a library. And the man apologizes and whispers, I like a hamburger, please. (laughs) Uh, uh, Is this pool safe for diving? Well, it deep ends. It deep ends. It deep ends. All right. Enough of that. I hope it made you smile. And I think we need, the Bible teaches us that laughter is a medicine. And I hope that maybe you you laughed a little bit. At least hopefully you smiled. If not, maybe you gave it a holy groan. (laughs) All right, we're going to look at Galatians chapter 6 and our Bible, uh, our Bibles together. Galatians chapter 6. And we're going to look at verse number 7 together once again as we continue the seven laws of harvest. And today we're going to look at this law. We reap in proportion to what we sow. We reap we reap in proportion to what we sow. All right, the Bible says in verse number 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. By the way, I hope you have the Word of God handy. Uh, It's important for us to look at what the Bible says because it's not my opinion that makes the difference. It's, It's thus saith the Lord that's going to change our life. And so we need to know what God has to say. So I hope you take the time and read these scriptures I'm about to give you in the Bible. See them for yourself. Meditate upon these biblical truths. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for its help in our life each and every day. Give us wisdom, I pray. I pray, Lord, for each one that's watching this live stream. Lord, give them a special blessing, a a special help in their life. And Lord, wherever they are, meet them there. Lord, and help them to take steps forward in in their Christian life. We love you. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the, the promise and warning of Scripture is that we reap what we sow. We've talked about this time and time again in our study, uh, reaping and sowing. Uh, this means that life's choices is filled with consequences, both good 
and bad, both temporal and eternal. Reaping what we sow means we reap only what has been sown. We reap in kind as we sow. We reap in a different season than we sow. We reap more than we sow. But we also reap in proportion as we sow. Now, in reality, the laws of sowing and reaping mean as now, so then. As now, we reap now, and then we sow now, and we reap then. And and the thought is not someday, then I'll get started, or someday I'll start reaping. But the idea is now we sow, and tomorrow we will reap. Uh, Today, we are becoming what we will be the rest of our lives. While the last two laws are related, there is a very important difference. The last two laws both deal with the fact we reap more than we sow. Both deal with the quantity and the amount. But the previous law, where the seed sown is multiplied many fold, has to do with God's part. And tonight, we're going to look at our human responsibility. We're talking about the fact that we reap in proportion to what we sow. And the biblical principle is that now is the time in which we as Christians ought to be sowing in our life. There's a sign along the Alaskan highway that reads this, choose your rut carefully. You'll be in it for the next 200 miles. Listen, God's part is that Whatever is sown is multiplied many fold. Okay, that's God's part. We we reap what we sow, we reap more than we sow. God will bless when we sow. But man's part, our part, our responsibility as Christians is trusting God and taking that initial step to sow for the glory of God. And that's what I want to talk about uh, this evening for this Bible study, if we could, is the idea of reaping in proportion to what we sow but also the idea of of taking that time and walking by faith, taking those steps and sowing good seed in your life. Number one, if you're taking notes tonight, would you write this thought down? There's the declarations of this principle. The declarations of this principle. Now, the Bible teaches us in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6, the Bible says, but this I say, he which sowing soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. But he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Now, bountiful sowing leads to bountiful reaping. Okay? Real a simple, real simple tonight. It's a simple, it's a simple principle. Bountiful sowing is going to result in bountiful reaping. In other words, if, you know, the Christian principle is this, if we want to be rich, we give. If we want to be poor, then we grasp. If we want abundance, we scatter. If we want to be needy, then we hoard. This is what the Bible teaches us. Now, obviously we're talking far more advanced than just, you know, financials here. We're we're not just talking about dimes and cents. We're talking about Christian blessing. The world's philosophy is a lot different. The world's philosophy is, you know, get all you can, can all you get, and then set on that can, right? That's, that's the world's philosophy. It's all about you. Get everything that you can. You know, you might have seen the license plate, the, 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 or I guess the bumper sticker that says, you know, whoever has the most, to, uh, most toys at the end of, the, of their life wins. That's the philosophy of the world. And yet the blessing of God is found in giving. Give and it shall be given unto you. Now, not only is there the, the, the declaration of, of this principle found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, but number two, there are so many examples of this principle. There are so many examples in the Bible of this principle being seen. Now, the law that we reap in proportion to what we sow, like all laws of harvest, operate both on the negative and also on the the positive. If we sow abundantly to the Spirit, we're going to reap abundantly in spiritual blessings. 
But if we sow abundantly to the flesh, then we're going to, we're going to reap those consequences, right? And, and David is a great example of this in the Bible because David continued to sow to the flesh. His sin began to snowball. And that's how sin works, right? We commit a sin and then we cover that sin with more sin and then it just it snowballs. It gets out of control. And he went from, from coveting Bathsheba to, to one sin after another until he had broken half of the Ten Commandments. He had sinned abundantly, and because of that, he had reaped abundantly. And those consequences that, that David reaped were harsh consequences in his life. The primary motivation and emphasis of this principle and promise in the Bible is toward the good. Now, when we read these promises, when we think of this principle, we're going to reap in proportion to what we sow. Uh, the, the examples of the Bible is toward a positive reaping, a positive sowing. That's what the, the scripture says. And so God encourages us through a number of passages of scripture uh, to live as children of God according to principle and promises. And, and if we do that, our generosity will not be forgotten in our Christian life. The Bible says in Acts 20, verse 35, I have shown you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more, uh, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is living like Jesus. All right, this is what we're talking about. Anytime we open the Bible, we talk about holy living or anytime we talk about righteous living or proper biblical living, we're talking about mimicking the life of Jesus Christ. Given it shall be given unto you, good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom for with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. That's Luke chapter, two, uh, Luke chapter 6 and verse number 30. Matthew 19 verse 29 says, And everyone that hath for, forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or fathers or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. This is the principle that we find in, in the scripture. All right, now we go to the book of Philippians and we think of the church at Philippi. The church at Philippi was a poor church. They didn't have anything. And yet they wanted to be a part of the work of God so bad that God enabled them by his grace to be able to give in an offering to the poor Christians in Jerusalem so that they could be a part of God's work. So the Bible says that they had nothing and yet they gave according to their power or what they could do and they gave beyond their power what only God could do because they had a willing heart and a willing spirit. So understand this, when the Bible says in Philippians 4:19 when Paul said, "My God will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus," And when the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully, every man according as he purposeth in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth, a cheerful giver. Now, let's think about that and, and we need to understand or have clarification of what the Bible is, is talking about. The analogy of sowing and reaping in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and Philippians chapter 4, 19 does not teach us that we will get back tenfold or a hundredfold of our givings so that we can live in greater luxury or that we can live in greater prosperity. That's not what the Bible is teaching here. The Bible is saying that if we, in grace sowing, give uh, to the Lord, then our purpose in that is that God would be glorified and that we can bless others, that we can be a blessing to others, that others can be blessed through our ministry. That is the heartbeat of this passage of Scripture. It's not, hey, listen, I'm going to invest $100 
uh, to the church and give to the Lord so that God will give me back a million dollars so I can buy that, you know, Mercedes Benz or I can buy that Dodge Viper. I don't even know if they make Dodge Vipers anymore. When I was a teenager, that was the car to have. I mean, everyone was talking about the Dodge Viper. That's not what the Bible is talking about in this passage of Scripture. The Bible is saying in the scripture is that we are to give so that we can give, that we can bless others through our faith as we give to the Lord. Now, listen, there are so many reasons why we shouldn't give. And if we sat and we meditated upon that, then we would have the conclusion in our life that during these days, it's unwise or unpractical for me to give to the Lord. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4, the Bible says, He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God, who maketh all. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whether shall prosper, uh, either this or that, or whether thou both shall be alike good. Contrary to how we typically think, these verses teach us that we are to sow. We are to sow today so that we can reap tomorrow. The verses warn us about the danger of being overly cautious, which hinders generous sowing. The uncertainties of life are one of the things that keep most people from giving and ministering to other people. And yet, when we have opportunity to give, the Bible says that we ought to give because God loves a cheerful giver. God wants us to be cheerfully, happily giving to Him so that He receives the glory ultimately and that we are able to bless and be a blessing uh, to other people. Most people are afraid their giving will be their lack. Most people are afraid that their giving will be their lack. Who, who knows what the future holds is, is the thinking of most people. If I give, I might not be able to meet the needs of my family. If I give that $50 or I give that $100 or I give that $200, then I might not be able to meet the need in my family. And yet by faith, we believe that God will meet that need. As we give to the Lord and we trust the Lord and we do what we're commanded to do in Scripture with a generous heart, we reap in proportion to what we sow. The point here is to is don't try to second guess the sovereignty of God. The point here is trust in the Lord. Trust that God is going to uh, give to us. He's going to give to us what what he promises uh, he will. Number three is the foundations to this principle. So we looked at the declarations of this principle, examples of this principle. And now we're going to look at tonight as we close our Bible study tonight. We're going to look at the foundation of this principle. Where does this principle come from? Why can I trust that this principle is true? Well, first of all, right away, let me say this. The principle itself comes from the character of God. It comes from the character of God. God's divine essence, his character, uh, forms the foundation and motivation for operating by this principle in your life. We need to remember who God is. We need to remember what God is like. And we need to remember what God has promised. So what is God like? Well, not only is he, is he omniscient and omnipotent and, and omnipresent and sovereign, but listen, God is loving and God is kind and God is gracious and God is a, a giving God. Uh, it is God's nature to bless and to give. And, and the greatest example I could say of this is found in the Bible when it talks about or the illustration of the supreme illustration would be the fact that Jesus came uh, to die for our sins. The Bible says, for God so loved that he what? He gave his only begotten son. In Romans 8, 32, the Bible says, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, 
that, that uh, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? The Bible says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Now, in Ephesians 3.20, we need to look closely at, at what God wants to do for you and me. All right, take a moment and think about what God wants to do for you and what God wants to do for me. According to these verses, in, or this verse in Ephesians 3.20, the Bible says that, that God wants to do according to what we ask and even think. The Bible goes further. It says, above all that we ask or think. The Bible goes further and says abundantly above all that we ask or think. And the Bible goes even further than that and says exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Obviously, since bountiful sowing is the result of what we do, we need to say a bit about our part and what is needed in us if we are going to act on this principle of sowing bountifully. Bountiful sowing is always the result of our outworking and biblical insight, values, commitment, and a spirit-filled life. The, the fact that we sow bountifully comes from what, how we see God and, and, and our view of God in our life. We believe that God can meet our needs. We believe you can't outgive God. We believe that God is there to, to provide and to help us and to teach us in our life. And our sowing is to be the result of faith from singleness of vision and our devotion to God because the foundation of this principle comes down to who is God in my life. He is an all-powerful God that can meet my needs and can help me in the life that I live. And so, friend, let me say this. We need to trust him. We need to trust him in our life. We need to move forward knowing that God is in control and that he is there to help us. The principle is simple. We reap in proportion to what we sow. And so oftentimes we get looking around us and we say, wow, this is not a good time to sow. There's, there's no bad time to sow. We should always be sowing to the Spirit, continually blessing, blessing others, helping others, praying for others, ministering, encouraging, because the Bible says you will reap in proportion to what you sow. One day, all of us, friends, all of us are going to stand before God. I believe that to be true. You're going to stand before God. I'm going to stand before God. And we're going to give an account of our life. We're not going to give an account of our sin. No, our sin is behind the Lord. God, God has buried it in the deepest sea. And he'll never bring it up again. My sin is gone, 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 the, the song says. But I will give an account as a steward. And I have been given a stewardship. And I've been given opportunity in my life to sow. And I need to realize that now's the day to sow. Now's the time to sow. Now's the time to get involved. Now's the time to serve. Now's the time to be a blessing to others. I sow what I reap. And so I want to be a part of reaping and sowing for the glory of God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the Bible study that we can have. And Lord, we're grateful for the opportunities that you give to us each and every day. Lord, I pray for our church family. Lord, I pray you would help us to be involved in sowing and reaping. And Lord, to understand that we reap in proportion to what we sow. So Lord, help us by faith, trusting you to reap all, to sow all we can so that we can reap spiritual blessings. We love you. We thank you for all that you've done for us. And I pray, Lord, for our church family, for everyone that's listening to this live stream, watching this live stream tonight. May your blessing be upon them. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, church family. Have a wonderful evening.